This is the Olympus OM2N, an SLR camera that was designed by Olympus. This is the Olympus Pen FT, also an SLR camera that is designed by Olympus. Both of these cameras work in a very similar fashion. It is able to transmit the light that's entering the lens to a viewfinder so that the photographer can see exactly what the camera is going to capture when the photo is taken. However, when you take a look at the Olympus Pen FT, you will notice that the camera looks slightly different in terms of its design. For one thing, there is no triangular hump or pentaprism hump that's placed at the top of the camera. The camera looks very rectangular. The second thing you will notice is that the lens is not placed directly at the center of the camera's body. Instead, it is placed towards the side. The reason for this particular design is due to the fact that Olympus has decided to use a special sort of viewfinder system, which they will call it the Poroprism viewfinder system. And today in this video, let's take a look exactly how one of these systems actually works to be able to transmit the light that's entering to the lens to the viewfinder located at the back of the camera. One thing special about this Olympus Pen FT is the decision to use the half frame film format as compared to the full frame 35mm film format that is used by many of the contemporary SLRs back in the day. Instead of shooting photos using a 36mm by 24mm film negatives, this camera will produce a film negative size of 18mm by 24mm. Olympus engineers decided to keep the direction of the film moving from left to right. My suspicion is that by keeping the film movement from left to right, this allows for the camera's control such as the film winding crank and the shutter button to be placed in familiar locations as compared to many of the standard contemporary SLRs that also has this similar film direction. However, since the film is now moving from left to right, when we take a look at how the photos are being shot, you can see that the Olympus Pen FT would by default shoot photos in the portrait orientation as compared to the landscape orientation used by many of the other film cameras back in the day. When we take a look through the viewfinder inside one of these Pen FTs, you can immediately see that the photo is going to be shot in portrait orientation when you hold the camera in its default position as compared to the Olympus OM which will shoot the photos in a landscape orientation. This particular observation can also be seen in the mirror box mechanism used by the cameras. On a standard SLR, you can see that the mirror actually deflects the photos upwards and is pivoted on the long edge of the mirror. On the Olympus Pen FT, however, you can see that the mirror is a standard half frame size mirror that is deflecting the light towards the side of the camera body rather than above. By doing so, the camera manufacturer is able to actually reduce the size or the clearing distance needed for the mirror to be able to swing back and forth when the SLR is being operated on. If you were to try to pivot the mirror on the shorter edge using the Olympus Pen FT, what you will notice is that the clearing distance needed for the mirror to swing completely upwards and downwards will exactly be the same as a standard 35mm SLR. To keep the space saving advantages, pivoting it on the long edge will allow for the camera to be able to be made smaller and the lens to be mounted closer to the film plane. We now have this particular interesting observation where the light is actually being deflected towards the side of the camera body rather than the top. So a standard pentaprism design may not actually work for this camera. This is where Olympus decided to innovate with their simple poroprism viewfinder system. Poroprism aren't really a new particular technology, they have existed for quite a while and they essentially work through the properties of total internal reflection that is available when light passes from one medium to the other. The standard polar prism is usually shaped in a right angle triangle something like this. So there are several ways you can use this particular configuration. You could allow for the image to pass through one side of the hypotenuse and what happens is that the right angle sides of the triangle will allow for the light to undergo total reflection and be deflected and come out the other end of the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. You could however also allow for the light to pass through the shorter sides of the triangle and now the hypotenuse will act like the total internal reflection surface to be able to allow for the image to pass through and exit from the other side of the right angle triangle. Olympus actually provides an interesting diagram to show you exactly how the prisms are arranged inside one of their cameras and we can take a look through their user manual as shown over here. Keep in mind that when you place a standard SLR lens onto a camera body, the image that is projected on the film will actually be reflected both in the x-axis and the y-axis. So the photo that is generated that the photographer would see will actually look something like this on the film negative. 
With the help of some animation, let's now walk through exactly how an image is actually projected through the lens and passes through this Poro Prism viewfinder system to allow the photographer to see exactly what the camera sees. Keep in mind that the image that is projected by the lens that is mounted on the camera always produces an image that is deflected on both the X and the Y axis, producing an image that is mirrored and upside down. When the photographer is not taking the picture, the quick return mirror is actually placed in its rest position. The image that is casted by the lens is now casting on the mirror, which the mirror then deflects it onto the focusing screen located on one side of the Poro Prism system present inside this Olympus Pen FT. Now, with the image projected onto the Poro Prism, it will then undergo total internal reflection in order to be able to be casted somewhere else. So here's how the image would look when it comes through to the other end of the Poro Prism. This image is now casted onto an internal mirror that is present inside the top of the Olympus Pen FT. The mirror then reflects this particular image to the second Poro Prism system that's located inside this viewfinder system. Now, this Poro Prism will finally perform the final total internal reflection procedures and you can see that the image that is casted at the viewfinder matches exactly what the photographer would see through their naked eye. In other words, they can see exactly what the camera sees with no weird reflections or rotations on the final image. Let's take a look at the animation one more time to see exactly how the light passes through the lens through all these components to produce the final viewfinder image. This Poro Prism viewfinder system is also exactly why this camera is shaped as it is. You can see that the lens is actually placed towards one side of the camera and is asymmetrical. This is to give space for all these prisms and mirrors to be placed towards the side of the camera body since the light is being deflected towards the side. The usage of a mirror that deflects the light towards the side helps to reduce the depth that is required for this camera body to allow for the lens to be mounted closer to the film plane and allows for a relatively small body. By allowing the light to be deflected towards the side instead of above, you also are able to reduce the height of the camera by reducing the needs of placing a pen prism at the top. And this results in a camera body that looks asymmetrical but at the same time looks very rectangular and clean. Some people even claim that this camera actually looks very similar to a rangefinder camera. I think this is a really good demonstration of excellent engineering in terms of camera design. And I'm glad that you guys have the opportunity to walk through with me on how the light is actually passing through this Poro Prism system. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this particular video. If you have any questions about this particular camera, do message me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. This is Photo Orca signing off and have a good day.